Governor Gordon Obaseki of Edo State was on Monday attacked by a group of armed robbers at Irua village in Uhumudu, local government area of the state. It was learned that security operatives repelled the attackers who attempted to block his convoy near the Jehovah's Witness International Headquarters adjacent a whole town. This newspaper reports that this is the second time the governor has been attacked. According to a source, the governor's convoy was said to be moving slowly without blaring his, blurring a siren when the incident happened. He said the hoodlums laid siege a few meters away from a police checkpoint was said to have mistaken the convoy for a prominent personality. The source added that the bandits allegedly fell a tree to block the road, apparently to rob motorists and commuters on the road, thereby causing pandemonium. He added that upon sighting the governor's convoy, the hoodlums fired a gunshot, but the security operatives attached to the governor and his deputy, Honorable Philip Shaib, replied, repelled the robbers who fled into the nearby bush. According to the security source who witnessed the incident but declined to mention its name, said they, the armed robbers, thought it was just a VIP that was coming. The governor's convoy was not blaring siren and was moving slowly when the attempt was made. Immediately, the convoy approached where they laid siege. They fell a tree. While we were thinking of what to do, they fired a gunshot. We have to jump out and repel those miscreants, he said. Hmm. Well, since uh, it was it to me, from this account, I just I feel that it's a, it's a random thing. And they didn't know maybe it was uh, the governor or whatever. They just believe that it's one of those uh, big uh, men that uh, usually pass and they wanted to do their usual thing. Well, one cannot say whether it was the target, they were targeting the governor or whatever. You know, anything can happen. Information could, could go round. And maybe the governor didn't want to even make his, his appearance or wherever he was going known. That was why they were not really, uh, the siren was not on. But apart from that, apart from that, just like we've heard, this is the second time. But the issue now is that if it were to be ordinary people, let's just say it was just a random thing. We cannot just conclude whether it is a random thing. It is just a speculation or insinuation. Uh, you can't say, oh, maybe uh, they just bumped into where the incidents uh, took place. But you can never say. Of course, in as much the governor was going, one or two persons must have known. And they would have like, okay, let us just try our luck. But it could be a random thing that those people didn't know that uh, it was. Uh, they just felt that it was just a VIP, according to the reports. But that is one of the things that the Nigerian people are faced with across the country. No security anyway. There's no security. Everybody, everybody, everybody just does what he likes. He just do, you know, just pray. That is what we we depend on. We just pray. If you go out that day as you are going out, you pray so that you come back safely. A lot of people, you know, have lost their lives in the process. Security across the country, it's zero. Nobody is securing anybody. Nobody is securing anybody. You know, randomly, you can just meet all these people along expressway. A lot of people have lost their lives. Some people who were able to escape. If you hear what their stories are, you will be surprised. Even for you to travel, it is something else. Most especially when you talk about all this, uh, all this uh, Bini or a road, all those uh, Agbo road, all those uh, all those express we have across the country. Here you go to the north, that one is a different thing entirely. It's another thing entirely. So it's cut across board. No security anywhere. You just everybody just lives by by faith. The survivor of the fittest. If you come back fine. If you don't come back, that is it. This is the second time. If governor, let's just assume it was just a random thing that they just bumped into them. This is the second time he's experiencing that. Let's even take it take away whether it is a politi it's politically uh, related. But that is what every Nigerian uh, faces on a daily basis. So what kind of a country is that? And yet these people get a security vote. They get security vote. We still talk about the federal, federal allocation. We still talk about the one that the federal government is responsible for. What are they doing with the money? Nothing. They get the money on a monthly basis. Tell us how much do they spend? They get to six on six to seven hundred or between five hundred and seven hundred million naira. We are saying five hundred million naira every month. It's different from every other location. Then what do they do with this? 
this uh, look uh, this uh, security rules and they cannot account for it they can use it the way they want so how how do we how do we justify that across the country if each state if they are really using that money judiciously the way it ought to be used who, who, who said that and government federal government will see how what it needs to add who says that we are not going to be having uh, a peaceful environment but in as much according to constitution or according to law they said they should not use the money they can't account for the money that you just use the money the way you like so whether you you are not even sp spending anything nobody knows so the way we live in this country is just so so terrible because we learned that uh, the 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 what is this man's name the deputy you know this is a concern even the first time he came out with the security people you know they to try to push away those uh, hoodlums so what of uh, individuals who do not have a uh, who do not have a security pool around them? What will they do? They are, they will bounce to the Philistines. You're on your own. You're on your own. And with this thing, these people will not. They will not listen. They will not even uh, even put themselves in that position. That oh, I did been. I was just an ordinary citizen. What would have happened? Not you having you not having all those uh, people around you. What would have happened? What would have happened? But they will not look at that. The same thing when the president was sick. Do you know how much is spent in London? Do you know how much money was spent? Do you know how many days is spent there? At the end of the day, the man came back. You know, one would have thought that, okay, because of what he went to, he was able to experience how, how it feels to be, to be unwell. And if you don't have money, and millions of Nigerians are in that category, are in that category, and they cannot even spend, they, can't, they don't even have to spend, they don't even have, there's nothing even on ground. Even the, the little one we have, they can't even, they can't, Pay for that a man the man came back and yet he couldn't even do anything he was not bothered so that is why you see that majority of those politicians or our leaders they went through they know what it feels to 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 to, to suffer to be you know to experience suffering but as soon as they get that opportunity they forget everything that's a typical example of a nigerian leader they forget every other thing me i don't even want to be talking about uh, africans i talk about africa as a whole i talk about nigeria whether it's happening in other African countries is a different thing entirely. But at least I speak for Nigeria because I'm from Nigeria and I know what is obtainable there. So let's assume that it was just a, a mere it was mere it was, it was a mere coincidence. What could have happened if it were to be ordinary man? Before we would start insinuating, oh, maybe it's, it's a politically related or not. Well, they have opportunity to be able to repel them because they have security people around them. Of course, if uh, Shaibu was going on his own. He wouldn't have even come out to say he want to repair it because maybe he had that, uh, he had that uh, opportunity or he had that privilege of coming out because security people were around him. So guys, let's hear your opinion. What do you think? Put your comments in the comment section. Thank you.